All right, folks, we got to talk about bass. And I don't mean bass frequencies. I mean bass lines. You see, I love the Reason community that I get to interact with so often, whether that's on live streams, down below in the comments section, or in the music that so many of you send us to check out, which we do listen to. And one of the things I've come to understand from chatting with so many of you is that a lot of you are struggling with coming up with good bass lines. And I don't say that without counting myself among us. I've come to understand that many of us write songs from the top down. We might find some cool melody or hook we like, maybe we add some chords to it or put a drum beat on to give it some feel, and then we fill it out with some bass. When we do it that way, the bass is literally an afterthought. It's the thing we sort of have to do because we know the song needs it. And when I was just starting out, that afterthought caused my bass lines to be a lot of root notes, eighth notes, and octaves. A lot of this stuff. Really just filling space with an uninspired rhythm and the occasional raised octave for excitement. But today, all that changes. Baseline Generator is the newest player MIDI effect to land in the Reason Rack. Now it couldn't be easier to come up with bass lines that groove and have a lot more going on than just, well, this. There are many styles of electronic music from all the flavors of house, techno, disco, and hip hop, which are rooted in a bass groove. Find a good bass line and you've already got a winning track going. And what so many of us might not know when we're learning to make these genres is that a bass groove is born out of the relationship between the on-beat notes and, perhaps most importantly, the off-beat notes. So when we look at Baseline Generator, what we see is a device that gives us a wide range of controls to specifically experiment with crafting that exact relationship. Let's get some bass lines going by starting with a monotone bass synthesizer, which is well-suited for the task, and dragging a Baseline Generator over top of it. And so that we can all feel where these bass lines sit in the beat, let's put a drum beat in here too. And our bass line generator player gets to work doing exactly what it says on the label, generating bass lines. Though at this point, it is a pretty simple and sparse bass line. The real playground for bass line generator is the diamond shaped XY controller we find front and center. As soon as you start dragging around anywhere on that controller area, you will see a flurry of colorful sequences populating the baseline sequencer area of our player. Stop anywhere you want, press run again, and that simple sparse baseline has way more going on. In fact, let's explore the pattern controller some more and check out some of these baselines. Already, all of these bass lines sound like things that I could build up a whole track with, but what exactly is going on and how does it work musically? What is this diamond all about? How does it relate to the sequencer below? And what are these other knobs and controls that surround it? Well, it's all pretty simple actually, but the results you can get from it can be anything but. First, let's talk about the color scheme. In the most complicated but correct way that I could describe it, the green slider in the northwest corner of the diamond represents note patterns that are based on the odd number step divisions of a bar of music relative to the rate of our sequence. Simple, right? And of course the blue slider in the northeast corner would be based on the even numbered step divisions of a bar of music relative to the rate of the sequence. Now as correct as that explanation was, let me demonstrate it musically instead because it'll make way more sense. For the easiest way to understand it, I'm going to change the rate of our sequence to eighth notes. At an eighth note rate, a step in our sequence is either on the beat or it's off the beat. So steps one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on would represent those on beat steps. They're green in color and they sound like this. These are the downbeats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The even steps in between, two, four, six, eight, these occur on the offbeats. They're represented in blue, 
and they sound like this. Put them all together, and you get, well, actually a pretty boring bass line. But famed composer Claude Debussy said that music is the space between the notes. If a few of these steps are left empty, a bass line instantly becomes more interesting to the ear. If we change the rate from 8th notes to 16th notes, the concept of even and odd steps stays the same, but since we're now moving at twice the speed, the green steps represent both parts of the 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 8th note pulse, while the blue steps fall on the syncopated 16th notes which fall in between them. When it comes to cool bass lines that could really interest a listener's ear, these are the notes that give a pattern real flavor and energy. Now knowing all that, let's go back to exploring bass lines on the XY controller while keeping an eye on the sequencer down below. Because now you'll recognize that each sequence is made up of a series of blue syncopated and non-syncopated notes in green of shorter or longer duration. Baseline Generator has 64 green patterns and 64 blue patterns that can be combined in various orders. The next thing you may notice is that these patterns have different pitches, too. They're not just rhythms. They're full basslines which rely on the popular note choices found in many different basslines. Root notes, octaves, fifths, those versatile pentatonic pitches, and some passing tones to give a line its own vibe. Moving around the main controller selects a combination of green and blue patterns based on the coordinates of the controller. But we can also use the sliders on each side to select patterns independently, too. First, dialing in a green pattern we like, and then a blue pattern that pairs nicely. And right away, we end up with a rhythmically interesting bass line that we could start building around. With chords, some pluck arpeggio, and I mean, all you gotta do now is put a vocal hook of some type on it and the song is taking shape. and musical styles like this often use these repeating bass patterns as the foundation for the entire song. In fact, if you saw my recent video about pedal tones, it's almost like this steady bass line becomes the pedal point around which the rest of the song can develop. It's an incredibly effective musical technique, and that's why it's defined so much of EDM over the last four decades. But all that being said, there are times you'll want to add a little bit of variation. And that is where baseline generators' variators come into play. The name of the variators should already clue you into what they do. They allow us to dial in pattern variations, and there's one variator for each pattern color. If I adjust the blue offbeat side's variator amount, you'll see our sequence below changing, and on the blue slider, you'll see a representation of how far away from our original pattern our new pattern variation lies. The amount dial is bi-directional, meaning I can choose a variation of greater complexity, or a variation with less complexity than my original pattern. Now keen observers here might be noticing that it's only the back half of the sequence that's actually varying when I adjust the variator. And that's for the simple fact that a variation which varies the whole pattern isn't really a variation at all at that point. It's just a new pattern. So the variators only work by varying the later portions of the pattern, and you can set what part that is using the Variator Waveform Selector. Right now, it's set to vary the entire back half. We could vary only the back 25%, or we could choose one of the variators which actually move through several of Baseline Generator's patterns over time.
Whichever variator waveform you might choose, the trick to using them effectively is to make sure that your variation is exactly that, a variation from an already established pattern. In my song here, I have my original pattern that we can hear. And I want that to be the standard pattern that plays in my song. Then I want to choose to vary my pattern at key moments. To do this, I'll copy pattern 1 to pattern 2, so that now I have two identical bass lines. But on pattern 2, I'll dial up the variators on both the on and offbeat sides of the pattern. Now I can switch from pattern 1 to pattern 2 when I want to introduce that little extra variation. Of course, Baseline Generator is not just about building up house bangers. Let's switch to a more down-tempo vibe. Despite its slower feel, trap music is often constructed in songs which has its tempo set higher than house music. Which, if you know the answer to that, tell me in the comments, because why is it not at 70 instead of 140? I still don't know. But anyway, I've accepted it and moved on. So here we've got some drums laying down a pretty standard trap drum beat. If we wanted to add an 808 bassline on top of this, courtesy of Bassline Generator, there's a few extra considerations and a few extra controls to discuss. Let's first bring in my new favorite 808 bass patch from Algorithm, and drop a Bassline Generator on top. Right away, we can hear one thing we need to adjust, and that's the octave that our bass is playing in. We can do that in whole octave jumps here. Or we could adjust the root note of our bass line as well to move it out of the key of C. And just like we did before, we could start exploring various patterns to find a bass line that we like, but it won't take long to notice that things aren't quite as they should be. This type of bass line is far too repetitive, far too fast, and jumping around in pitch more than I'd like for a proper 808 bass part. Let's fix the speed part first. Remember, we're at 140 beats per minute, even though we have a halftime feel to our beat. So in order to make our bass play along in the same halftime feel, let's change the rate of our sequence from 16th notes to 8th notes. That is instantly better. We can also increase the number of steps in our pattern from 32 all the way up to 64. Doing that will also give us more variety before our pattern repeats. The next thing I'd like to adjust is the height of our note range. I'd like them to not be quite so far away from my root note in this pattern. Baseline Generator has a note range control, which we can use to compress the range of our baseline. And for dark, moody sounding lines like this, I'll dial up Baseline Generator's minorness control too. Now this is getting into some music theory territory, and you don't necessarily need to understand the details here. But the minorness control allows you to force major scale intervals into their nearest minor scale equivalent. Up until this point, we've been generating all these bass lines, all these variations, the note range, the minorness. It's all been done by manipulating the 128 preloaded patterns inside Baseline Generator, with 64 onbeat patterns and 64 offbeat patterns. But if we want to, we can dive into the sequencer and take complete control of our bass line by manually adjusting or creating our own parts of the pattern. I can click and drag steps in the sequencer to new pitches. I can turn off steps, turn on my own, tie steps together for sustain notes, and if my instrument patch is velocity sensitive, I can click and drag to raise or lower a step's velocity. And if I don't like what I did, I can always clear it back to the default pattern and try something else. But this is important. Once I customize either the sequencer's pitch by adjusting a step's note, or the sequencer's rhythm by adding and subtracting my own steps, 
the sequencer area locks itself off to preserve my customizations. In fact, once both manual pitch and manual rhythm are locked, any changes I make to the pattern selector or the variators have no impact on my sequence. And we can use this feature to our creative advantage, because often trap basslines have constantly subtly changing variations. So if I wanted more variation than these 64 steps allow for, one thing I could do would be to copy this customized sequence to its own pattern slot, disable the manual rhythm customization, and explore a new pattern combination on the XY controller while still preserving the custom pitch contour I brought over from pattern 1, but with a new varied rhythm, like this. And if I wanted to take the concept of 808 baseline variation one step further, I could make sure that incoming MIDI is set to control the pitch of my baseline's root note, and I could live transpose my baseline, usually just one or two notes away, like this. So that's Baseline Generator. I hope I've given you a good idea of what it's capable of, but like all Reason devices, it does way more. And I'm sure the Reason community is going to do things with it that we haven't even considered. That type of experimentation, it's not just encouraged, it's what creativity is all about. So have some fun with Baseline Generator, and surprise yourself with what you come up with. Look, I'll give you one to get you started with, for example. What would happen if you put Baseline Generator on top of Pattern Mutator, hit record, and used these lines as the pattern source, which you then mutate. So yeah, even if you consider yourself a baseline expert, maybe especially if you consider yourself a baseline expert, Baseline Generator brings you a whole new workflow for creating baselines that have groove, variation, and gets us all out of the stale routines we can find ourselves in. So use it, misuse it, abuse it, but most importantly, choose it for your next baseline.